Hi there and welcome to a new video and this is all about fitting a reversing camera to a car, be it a modern one or an older one. I thought first of all uh, we'd take a look at two or three of the cameras that are available and uh, I have tried various cameras and I'll talk a little bit about uh, the pros and cons as we go along but this is uh, the camera we're going to be using for the rest of the video. Uh, it's a good little unit, uh, quite uh, cheap. As you can see, it's got um, these visible LEDs around the edge. They're not infrared LEDs, they're actually visible, so they light up and, and visible to the human eye. Bracket for mounting, so it would go on the bottom of the back end of the car, on the bottom of the bumper, and you can see you can angle that uh, up and down. Uh, it has a reasonably good um, field of view. This is uh, one I've had for some time, uh, but they're still available now, and uh, it actually would fit, the idea would, it would fit in a hole which you would drill in the rear bumper of the car. And you can see it's got this um, sort of uh, lock ring on, and then these uh, rings that go on that have uh, chamfered angles on them. So, uh, they can sort of adapt to a, any particular sort of shape of car, so it would sit like that in the uh, in the back end of the of the car. You can see this one actually has a uh, ring of infrared LEDs, so these aren't visible to the human eye uh, when you're reversing, but they would light up the screen. So the screen that you're looking at in the in the car would uh, would illuminate your your view, your rear view. This is the latest one I've acquired, and it's very, very good build quality. Um, it's about three times as expensive as the first one. Um, it, uh, as I say, build quality is very, very good. The idea is it would sit just above your number plate, and you can see the sort of angle that you would get looking down. You may need to tilt it slightly to get the right angle. I found that I did when I was testing it on my on my car, but you can see, I don't know if you can see there, but the 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 quality is pretty good, it's sort of metal and then paint finish. Um, and I think of the three, it would probably be the most uh, durable. It's got again a sort of um, locking nut that uh, you drill a hole in that section above the, uh, the number plate and then it would sort of sit just above that. So that's three cameras. This is the lead that uh, is almost at the centre of this video because uh, what we're talking about is the fact that uh, this, this is the link lead from the front to the back of the car, which has two RCA connectors, as you can see for the video. And then it has these two red pigtail uh, lines, and that actually provides a power line to go all the way from, the fr from one end of the cable to the other. And, uh, we'll be talking about where you might get your power from and where you might want to send it to and why. And the other thing to notice is that the ground is actually inside this cable. So the ground for the power is uh, in that cable as well as the one for the video. So actually the this is the uh, ground signal for both video and power. Finally, this is another cable you'll get with it. You won't have the crop clip on there that's on there. I've just put that on for the video, but this is a barrel connector, which will go into the barrel socket of the uh, camera. I guess the idea is you might want to change camera at a later time or whatever and leave the wiring in situ. Uh, so again, you can see where that fits into any of these uh, particular units, but that's the bit that provides power to the camera. As you can see, I've got that croc clip on there. We'll see that later on in the video. Okay, so basically what I've done is I've created a sort of mock-up of the car. You can see various bits there um, sort of laid out. We've got the camera uh, here on the top left and the, uh, the little power drop cable that we just spoke about, but this is the car layout. We've got battery at the front with a positive and a negative terminal so that we can actually attach things to that. We've got a gearbox uh, here or a gear stick and a reversing light here. And we'll come on to that much more later on in the video. You can see I've got a, an earth wire for that reversing light 
are coming, but we'll talk about that much more later on in the video. We're using my Android head, head unit, which is may, may well be what you're using, but it, it might be might be different. This is just an RCA socket representing the socket on the back of the unit, just to save me going back uh, around the back of there throughout the video. And uh, you can see we've got the wiring for the car there uh, with a quad lock connector, an ISO connector. We'll talk much more about that later on. There's also a drop lead there for the uh, reversing selector on the head unit. And then this is uh, the camera, as I say, that uh, we spoke about earlier. We'll be using these two together. So we'll plug this straight in now. And that's effectively, for the purposes of our video, that's our camera setup with the RCA uh, feed that comes straight from the camera there uh, and would go down the power line, down the, uh, down the video line and the power connector there. So this is the extension cable, the cable that runs from the front of the car to the back that comes with a kit. And as I say, you'll notice that it has the RCA connector on and the power pig leads on. So let's plug the RCA video cable in. And just for now, for the purposes of this part of the video, we're just looking at the basics here as to how the camera works. We'll plug that pigtail in as well. So now on the end of this RCA connector, we can plug that into our RCA connector for the head unit. And then basically we need to get our power from somewhere. Now, this is where this, this lead comes into uh, its own in terms of doing it this way because we can simply connect this to the positive terminal of the car and that will make the uh, the camera come on as you can see and if we select the video input on the Android head unit there we go we've got a uh, an image albeit upside down of course because uh, the camera would be mounted the other way up uh, but that's working nicely on the on the Android head unit as a screen. So what we're doing here is basically taking our power from the uh, positive terminal of the battery and we're sending it down the cable uh, that uh, comes with the kit. So that's all well and good uh, for testing the camera, uh, but if you think about it, you don't actually want the camera to be on all the time. So we've got our camera on all the time now because it's connected to the uh, to the positive terminal of the battery. The lights would be on. You can see the lights are sort of shining brightly. Whether or not you've got uh, one with, with visible lights on or, or not, uh, you don't really want that camera to be on all the time. So what we need to do really is come up with a way of engineering it such that uh, the camera will come on when reverse gear is selected and that's why we've got a mock-up of the uh, reversing of the of the gear shifter there um, so that we can start to play around with some different ideas so let's to start off with let's just remove the power we're going to leave the video lead in uh, for now because obviously that's going to stay there uh, but let's first of all take an example of a an older car which um, has a switch on the gearbox and that switch has a live feed to the reversing light on the back of the car so the red lead represents that link and basically if we now select reverse, you can see the reversing light come on the back of the car. That's because this is simply going via the, it would be obviously in the wiring loom of the car, but um, it's going from the switch on the gearbox, very straightforward, 12 volt positive feed. If you can find that feed coming out of the gearbox, um, then that could be the way to go on an older vehicle. So we've got two, two places. Uh, we've got the this point here and we've got this point here that we could take our positive feed for our camera and later on we'll talk about why we want to send it to the head unit as well remember that this cable has the power lead going through it so we can send uh, the power both ways so 
So what we're going to do now is we'll just knock it out of reverse. And let's say we want to take our power from the back of the vehicle. That's very convenient because that's where the camera is. And as you can see, if we take our power from that point, the camera is now coming on when we select reverse gear. You can see the, uh, the head unit is showing the output from the camera when we select reverse gear. Uh, that's quite convenient um, because it's, uh, it's where, the, where the camera will be mounted anyway, close to the, uh, the reversing light. And uh, so that might be one very sensible way of doing it. So we're taking our power directly from the reversing light 12 volt signal. So the other point we could take it from, rather than taking it from here, uh, bearing in mind, as I say, this is an older car with a switch here that uh, switches 12 volts. What we could do is take our power lead and attach that to the 12 volt feed from the gear stick that goes live when reverse gear is selected. That means all we've got to do at this end is attach our pigtail. So you can see now that what's going to happen is when we select reverse, the camera again will come on by us selecting reverse because the power is now coming from here and it's basically traveling all the way down the line. And you can see when we select reverse, the camera is activated and uh, we can see that on the screen. So that's using the the cable running this way with the power running from the right of the screen to the left. Okay, so now let's move on to a more modern vehicle. Um, on more modern vehicles, you don't have a direct connection. So this is a direct hardwired connection through the loom of the car from the gear stick to the reversing light terminal over here. So basically that is replaced with a different system. So the system that is used on more modern cars is rather than having this cable that runs directly from the gear stick to the reversing light, let's take that out of the way now. You can see now we have no light coming on because we've taken that cable away. What happens on a more modern car, which has a canvas system, is that the signal that uh, the car is in reverse travels via a system called canvas and canvas is a network that runs all the way around the car it does lots of other things as well so it might uh, monitor the state of the windows or even control the windows it might have uh, control of the windscreen wipers it might go off to locks, um, all sorts of different things, lights. Uh, but basically what we're interested in is the fact that uh, on this system, um, the uh, reversing signal is sent by canvas. So now you can see magically when we knock the car into reverse, it's actually traveling through the canvas system and not actually using a, an actual straightforward 12 volt feed off the, uh, the gear stick which uh, would happen in an older car. We do still though have power live at this end, uh, but the canvas is, is what's being used to transmit the reverse signal to the reversing light. So let's go back to our camera in this particular instance. And Let's plug our video RCA lead back in and we'll put the, uh, 
the monitor on ready to receive that signal. And we're going to take our power now for the camera directly from the reversing light. So exactly like we did before, but just with a canvas system. So if you're going to take the signal from the reversing light, then it really doesn't make that much difference whether you've got an older car or a newer car. Um, the only difference here is that the signal is getting from the gearbox to the reversing light via canvas, but we can still take our power feed for the camera directly from the reversing light. So let's now move on to a situation where the uh, where we have canvas and you can see here we have the car the uh, head head unit is actually on the main menu it could be uh, in playing music or your sat nav or whatever what we really want is to avoid having to go to this section and select the video every time we select reverse gear what we really want is every time we select reverse gear for it to automatically change over uh, to the um, video feed of the rear camera and that's where this lead comes in this lead is a cable that comes off the back of the uh, many head units and it usually will be re will be labeled back or reverse and its job is to when it's given a power signal of 12 volts will tell the head unit to automatically go into the mode to display the reversing camera and we can demonstrate that now if we just get a, a fly lead from the positive terminal of the battery connect that up that's gone straight to the view of the back camera now we haven't got the camera on at the moment but we can show that now so you can see if we select reverse gear we've got that and if we tell the head unit to move into reverse camera mode then it um, it shows the rear view camera but that, then when we take that away it goes straight back to the normal view so all we now need to do is get some feed from somewhere to tell the uh, head unit on that line that we are selecting uh, reverse gear so we could take the feed from here so if you're taking your feed from your camera from the rear light the sensible thing to do would simply be to join these two up and as you can see when we're in reverse gear that will automatically go over when we come out the head unit will go back to its normal display whatever that might be sat nav or whatever and when we select reverse gear the uh, image comes back again that works really well So what about a situation where it's actually quite difficult to take the feed uh, for that switch or indeed for the camera itself from either here, the uh, switch on the gearbox, or from here. And I'm just going to show a very short video uh, where this, uh, this is the case. This is my Peugeot uh, 307 and you can see the reversing light is actually built into the boot and that's bad en if that weren't bad enough the, f the car is a convertible and that boot moves in both directions it moves um, it pivots both ways so you'd have to get all the wiring uh, around all that, uh, that scissor hinge or whatever you would call it in order to get it right down here to where you want the reversing camera so what we might want is a way to get a signal for reverse uh, without actually using either of these two points. Uh, what we really want is a signal here that comes actually from the canvas uh, and goes high or goes to uh, a 12 volt signal when reverse is selected. There is a way of doing this. You can see here we've got our wiring harness with our ISO, sorry, with our quad lock connector and our ISO connector going into the stereo. That's just a straightforward lead that you can buy. 
This is a lead that can go in between the two instead of that lead. It has its ISO connector on that end, as you can see, but it also has this magic box in here. This one was made by Connects2, so you can see the Connects2 logo on there. And its primary function actually is to allow steering wheel control of the Android head unit. So if you buy uh, an aftermarket head unit and you want steering wheel, steering wheel control for volume and track forward and all that sort of thing, that, uh, that's what this device will do. And I may well do a, a video in the future about that um, in terms of steering wheel controls. Um, but it has a bonus and the bonus is that coming off that device, let's just unplug this because we don't actually need that functionality at the moment. That's the, um, the steering wheel control wiring. You can see it has these extra fly leads coming off, one of which is actually a reversing signal. So whenever reverse gear is selected, uh, that lead will go positive. So when we select reverse here, uh, this lead will actually go positive. So I've taken out, as you can see at the front, I've taken out the standard connector and I'm just gonna plug in this magic one. There's the, the standard, um, quad lock to ISO connector. You can see the quad lock connector from the car and we're going to plug that in. And that goes through to the ISO connector at the other end and then has, <coughs> there we go, there's the ISO connector and then has the, um, the box in between. Now just to simplify things because there was getting too much wiring in the video I've just moved a, th a few things out of the way but the important thing is that you can see here we've got the uh, the device I'm going to refer to it as the connects to go box but it's made there are other ones made by other companies um, and you can see that that's now linked in so that we can actually do some demonstrations. Again I've taken out that lead uh, that does the steering wheel controls um, just to simplify things just to to uh, make it easier to see. So we've got a pink lead and we've got a green lead uh, in the case of the Connect 2 one and we've got a purple lead and the uh, purple lead is the one that we're interested in here because that actually gives a signal from this camber system in the car whenever the car goes into reverse. My, my lettering has gone a bit skew with so let's just rewrite that in a bit. So when reverse gear is selected, uh, this wire will go high or will go to 12 volts thanks to this magic gadget in between. And that's very useful for us uh, because we can use that for two different things. Let's just show that that's what actually happens though. So we use a multimeter and we will effectively, we'd be getting a signal from here without actually getting it from the, uh, from the gear stick. We'll be getting it from canvas. So I'm just going to clamp this on to the negative terminal of the car battery. And then if we attach this to the signal coming out of this Connects 2 box, you'll see when I select reverse gear, the reverse light comes on as per before, but you can see it's showing a 12 volt signal coming out of the, uh, the line from the, from the special box. Now that means we can use that in two ways. Uh, we can use it to, to make the head unit switch over. And if we just join these two together and select reverse gear, you can see that that will actually make the screen change to the rear camera view. We haven't got the camera in at the moment, so it's not showing it but we can, we can do that now. Now, a word of warning here, you will need a relay for this if you want to power the camera from this signal, but I cover all of that later on in this video. So if you keep watching, you'll see how to do that if you want to. So let's just wire up our camera again. So we put the RCA feed in and we're going to get our power from the other end of the RCA. So we're gonna plug our pigtail lead in at that end. We're gonna plug our RCA lead in at the uh, video end, at the Android head end. And then we're going to put these cables together. So you can see that the signal now is coming from the Connects 2 box. And when we select reverse gear, 
we get the head unit automatically switching over and the camera coming on. Now, as I say, a word of warning here, you do need a relay, and I will talk about that in a minute, but we're not having to take any signal from the back of the car or from the gearbox. The signal for going into reverse gear is coming from canvas and coming from that magic box uh, in our wiring harness. So each time we select reverse gear, we've got the perfect scenario. The camera is coming on and the head unit is switching to reverse camera mode. So if you want to do that last final bit, uh, you'll need a relay. And uh, at the end of this section, I've got a still of this particular relay that I use. So if you want to use the same one, you can use the same uh, same relay. And I'll put the details in the feed as well uh, below the, uh, the video. But you've basically got five pins on. You've got a normally uh, open and normally closed. You've got uh, a two pins for the uh, coil and then you've got the pole uh, connector in the middle. So let's actually draw that out and then you can see how we wire it in in our slightly skew with relay. Sorry about that. So we've got the three pins on one end of the relay and we've got the two pins at the other end of the relay. These two pins are the for the coil which actually activate the, uh, the relay. And then this is the common connector that can go between normally closed and normally open. And then this one is the normally closed and this is the normally open. So this is the one we're interested in. So we want to link the P to the normally open uh, with our circuit to uh, power the, the camera. So what we want to do is take our feed for the coil for these two pins from the output of the connects to go box or the whatever box you've chosen to use that provides the reversing signal, calling it the connects to box. So that's that lead we just looked at a minute ago. That goes on one pin of the coil and the other one, of course, just goes straight to earth. Uh, so that just goes to a ground that's sort of convenient wherever you're wiring this in. And that means that we're switching based on the connects to output. And then we can simply wire this pin to 12 volts and this one will come off and give us our feed to power the camera. So that means that we get a much higher ampage feed. Uh, so the camera will work uh, which it might not do with the output straight from the Connects 2 box. In fact, I was warned by them that that would not uh, work reliably over time. So in other words, you need to use this, this relay. So this is the relay. I will put a link to the uh, item on eBay in the uh, description uh, below. And that's uh, an image of my uh, relay actually wired in uh, with some heat shrink on each of the connectors. So you're using uh, four out of the five connectors. So let's just sum up uh, everything we've looked at. Um, and go over things. So here's our car, not quite as nicely drawn as before. There's the four wheels. And here's our reversing light on the back of the car. Here's our gear stick with its switch. And here's our Android head unit. So really the essence is that we can take our power from a multitude of different places or, or three specific different places. Either the bulb or the switch on the gear stick in the case of an older car or the canvas. So let's draw our cable in with our pigtail leads on. So that's the cable that runs from the front to the back of the car anyway. Let's make that look a little bit more like an Android head unit, not much. And there's our video feed into the back of our Android. Sorry, there's our back uh, connector uh, going into the uh, head unit. So that's the, the line that switches the head unit into 
uh, into the reverse screen mode. And here's our camera. So our video feed is going to go from the camera into the head unit anyway. That's a given, that's gonna happen regardless. Can't think of any situation where that wouldn't be the case. Uh, it's, uh, it's really what we do with the uh, power signal and where we get it from. So remember that the power lead is going all the way through this so we can use any combination of things to achieve what we want. And what we want is a signal at the back selector and we want a signal at the camera. So we can join our connector up to the reversing light and we can take our pigtail to the connector on the back of the head unit and that will send the signal when we select reverse gear that will send the signal to the head unit to switch over into the reversing mode and will obviously power the camera when reverse is selected. So that's option one and we can do that on either a canvas car or a non-canvas car. So secondly, let's just look at the next possibility, which is an older car where we can take our feed from the gearbox. So in this case, we can take our power feed from the gearbox switch and we can take that straight up to the input line of the stereo that switches the stereo into reverse view mode. And we can also take that and feed it into our pigtail to send our power the other way. So you can see we're sending power the other way around down to the camera. We're not involving the reversing light anymore. This is on an old car without canvas. So the reversing light isn't involved anymore. We're switching based on a 12 volt feed from the from the gearbox and that will work very nicely as well. So again, power coming that way round, coming down, not using the reversing light at all. And the final thing we looked at was not using either of those things. So we're not going to use a switch from the gearbox because we haven't got one. There is a switch in the gearbox, but actually it's sending a signal to canvas rather than giving a positive output line, 12 volt feed. Uh, we still want our signal here and we still want our power signal here, but we're not gonna use the reversing light. Uh, we're not gonna use the gearbox switch directly. So now we're going to use our Connects to box or other brands available. And we're going to use that through the relay as we just saw on the previous screen. And we're going to take our power feed for the camera, which then goes down the cable all the way to the camera. And that will be activated every time reverse is selected. And then either from that same point or without the relay because the line into the back sim signal doesn't need such high ampage, uh, we're gonna take the uh, connector there as well. So you can see that's gonna get its signal uh, when reverse is selected via canvas and so is the, uh, the video camera, the camera at the back of the car. That will work very nicely. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed that video and um, please do like and subscribe. It uh, does make a big difference and um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks very much. Bye for now.